Hello team, good morning, good afternoon, good evening and welcome to my session. Today, this video is all about CISSP Domain 1, a high level overview that you must know while preparing for this exam. My name is Prabh Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. Thank you. So, I received a lot of feedback regarding Prabh, you know, do and don'ts for the CISSP Domain 1. So, do you have any advice for that? So I thought I will make a small video which talk about what are the important areas that we should refer while preparing for CISSP Domain 1 Security and Risk Management. One thing is that do not take security and risk management for granted. This domain is a base for all the seven domains. The question can be start from domain 2, the question can be start from domain 3, answer will be in a domain 1. Example like we are planning for a security model in the organization. What is the first thing we need to review? What is the first thing we need to validate? We do the risk assessment of our strategy. So risk assessment is a part of a domain one and a security model is a part of a domain seven. That is why domain one is a base of seven domains. All the decisions that you take in CISSP in the real exam in terms of questions, understanding and all that it is done based on the risk assessment and that is the base in the domain one. So when you're talking about the domain one, it starts with CIA, confidentiality, integrity and availability. You also need to know about what are the principles by which we achieve the confidentiality, integrity and availability. Example, separation duty is used to achieve integrity, dual control used to achieve integrity, uh, hot site, cold site, backup sites, part of availability, load balance are part of availability. Principle of least privilege need to know part of a confidentiality. So not only you know the concept, but also you need to understand how those principles are basically mapped in the topic. Coming back to the second part, you need to have a very good understanding of the governance. You must be familiar with the security governance, governance, IT governance. Okay. Small advice, ultimate goal of a security governance is to reduce the risk to an acceptable level. Remember that from the exam point. Another important thing in the security governance is a good strategy is the one which meet with the business objective. And that is an evidence talk about the effective security governance. You also need to know the responsibility matrix where you must be familiar with the role of a CISO, information security manager, consultant, data owner, data custodian. If we talk about the domain one, the next most important thing is called as a policy, procedure, standard, guideline. Remember one thing, whenever any kind of a system we introduce in the organization, we first introduce a policy for that because policy talk about why we need this. Policy created by information security officer, but it is approved by the senior management. Example like every system must be protected with a password. That is a policy. Password must be eight character. That is a standard. Okay, how to create that password procedures and then minimum password requirement for every system is a baseline. Never use the family name is a guideline. So you must have a good understanding of policy. Policy need to be reviewed annually or in the case of business change, environment change or regulatory change. Moving to the next part in the domain one, we also talk about uh, this one, which is called as intellectual property. <laughs> intellectual property is a very important topic in CISSP exam. You must be familiar with the copyright, patent, trademark, trade secret. When you're talking about the copyright, copyright protect the expression of idea, but idea themselves protect by the patent. Company secrets are protected by the trade secrets and company logo protect by the trademark. You must be familiar with the licenses used in an intellectual property. As a security consultant, which part of category will be part of which intellectual property, you must be familiar with that. Example, logo will be part of a trademark. Company's formula, part of the trade secrets. So this kind of familiarity you must have for this topic. Moving to the next part called as a risk management. Risk management, I will recommend you to review from a CBK. They give the very good visibility about the risk management, especially CBK 6th edition and also refer the NIST 837 standard, 837 standard. When we talk about risk management, it starts with the identification of the risk. We talk about the identification of asset, identification of a threat, identification of vulnerability. Important part in the risk identification is the value of assets because value of assets drive the value of risk and associate with the controls. 
So in risk identification, first step is identifying asset, identifying threats and identifying vulnerability. The next part we called about the risk analysis. We are talking about the qualitative and quantitative risk analysis. You must be familiar with the qualitative and quantitative risk parameters. You must be familiar with the SLE ALERO. You don't need to carry any calculator because in the exam on the left side of the app you can find the calculator app. So you don't need to carry any, any kind of calculator. So risk identification is the first thing. Risk analysis is the second thing. Third phase risk evaluation where we are evaluating all the results. And based on that you take a decision. So we have a four type of risk treatment. Accept the risk, avoid the risk, transfer the risk or mitigate the risk. You must be familiar with these concepts. One thing you need to remember any risk exceed the capacity we avoid. Any risk below the capacity and equal to appetite we have accept the risk. Okay, we are transferring the risk but we are not transferring the accountability. We are mitigating to an acceptable level. The risk which is left after implementing control that is called as a residual risk and that must be monitored. To mitigate the risk we introduce the control types and category. So when you're talking about the types, we have a physical control, we have a technical control, we have administrative controls. And we also talk about the category of a control which is called as a preventative control, technique, a preventative control, deterrence control, detective control, compensating control, corrective control and recovery control. System was infected with the virus. Immediately remove the system from the network is a corrective control. Restoring system back to the production within a defined MTD RTO that is basically a recovery control. Compensating control come into the picture when my existing control is basically ineffective or it is not very strong. My user is not familiar with the complex password. So as a compensating control I introduce a multi-factor authentication. Because I know he is going to use a simple passwords. But make sure his, his account should be still protected. That's why we introduce a multi-factor authentication which is called as a, uh, this called something you know and something you have. So this is how the control types and categories defined in the exam. One small advice, camera is basically a physical detective control because when you enter into the facility or as a thief, as an intruder, he see the camera and his actions get shattered when he see the camera. So that is the control type and category. Next thing is you must be familiar with the due care and due diligence. You want to clear the exam, it's your due care. But verify all the videos before watching that, that's your due diligence. You can review my uh, security risk management PPT based video where I have explained about this topic. You are a basically a firewall administrator. You are responsible for maintaining a firewall, that's your due care. But before implementing any kind of a rule, review the business requirement, review the regulatory requirement, testing those rules, it's part of a due diligence. Okay, the next part we talk about the threat modeling. You must be familiar with the stride full form. You must be familiar with the pasta. When you're talking about threat modeling is called as a scenario analysis of a threat that we perform in the design stage of an application development. Because during a design phase, we have visibility about how the, how the application is going to be work. In a threat modeling, the first step is data flow diagram. And second step is attack surface analysis. You must be familiar with the threat modeling is performed in which phase of an application development. It done in a design phase. Okay. The next thing is basically called as a uh, hiring procedures. When we are hiring any candidate, what are the do and don'ts we consider? First thing you need to remember, he must sign the NDA. Then he attend the security awareness training. How you measure the security awareness training? Number of people participated? No. Number of people attended the session? No number of incidents reported just imagine this week we conducted the security awareness training and this week by the end of the week we, we have seen the huge number of incident has been reported that shows the effectiveness of a security awareness training because people are much aware about the incidents people are much aware about the system activity and that is where they have reported those incidents one example point is the effectiveness of the security awareness training by seeing the number of people who reported the incidents and decline in the security violation. So increase in the incident reports and decline in the security violation. That is how you measure the awareness training. There is a thin line difference between the awareness training and education. Awareness talk about the behavior, training talk about the skill and education talk about the career. The next important thing you must be familiar with called as a BCPDR. You must be familiar with BIA, you must be familiar with the MTD, RTO, RPO. Okay, for your reference, the recovery strategy that we create, it is based on the RTO. But make sure we store, restore all the services within a defined MTD. A good BCP plan is the one in which we able to restore the services within a defined MTD. 
whenever we're talking about the backup strategy we always map with the rpo in the bcp the first step is obtain the policy or create the policy then second step is bia then we prepare the recovery strategy submit the uh, business case with the recovery strategy to the management management approve that and then you implement that strategy in the organization another important thing that you must be familiar about in the domain one is vapt vulnerability assessment and penetration testing the first step in the vapt is signing the nda then scoping then we have a further phases you must be aware about detail about vapt in the domain six Another important thing is that called as a blind test, non-blind test, external, internal test. So you must be familiar with when to conduct internal test, when to conduct external test, when to conduct uh, blind test and when to conduct the non-blind test. Along with that, there will be some privacy regulations you must be aware about. You must be aware about privacy versus secrecy. Like example, secrecy used in the organization. Your organization data is mapped with the secrecy, but your privacy is mapped with the individuals. US basically have a HIPAA. It is applicable for the covered entity. Remember that covered entity equal to HIPAA. Covered entity is a healthcare provider who so collecting your healthcare data. So they must be comply with the HIPAA. Another important thing that is basically talk about uh, uh, G- GLBA. GLBA is applicable for the companies who collecting the financial data. Then the third is called as a SOX, Sarban Oxley Act, which is applicable for the companies to be comply with their FTC regulations. So as a company, I'm registered in US, so I need to comply with the SOX and as per that, I need to maintain the accuracy of a financial statements because that, that is how we can able to protect the investor from all kinds of a frauds. So SOX equal to uh, financial protection, GLBA equal to protecting a financial data of a consumer and HIPAA is basically equal to protecting the healthcare data of the consumer. All three are basically part of the US. Then you must be familiar with the GDPR then CCPA of the California Consumer Privacy Act. Along with that, the most important thing in the domain one is called canons. Short form is PAPA, P-A-P-A, Protect Society, Act Honorably, Protect People and Protect Professions and all that. So PAPA is a short form. You must be familiar with the PAPA and you need to know the significance of PAPA, P-A-P-A. Another important thing is basically talk about the baseline. Okay, you must, be dif- you must know the difference between standard and framework. So this is all in the domain one that you must be aware about. And uh, this is something which I use to cover in my session, okay, which I will take two days. And if you find this video useful, do share in network and do share feedback in a comment section. How do you find this video? And if you find this video great, I will plan to make another video of domain two. Bye, take care. And most important thing, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon. Bye.